One of the biggest uh, strikes against the startup new business for me is when I look at the pro formas and I see the number one expense line is owner compensation. (laughs) (laughs) And I was just like, so you're basically telling me you're gonna pay yourself before you even pay me, your lender. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Startup Junkies podcast. Thanks for tuning in from wherever and however you're tuning in with us today. My name is Caleb Talley. I'm on the Startup Junkie team, and I'm joined by my fellow Startup Junkie co-host, Jeff Amaran. How's it going? Great. Glad to be here. It's a it's a beautiful day in Northwest Arkansas. Harrison, how are you, sir? Lovely rainy day. It reminds me of England. <laughs> Matter of fact, um, and we're joined today uh, for a special episode of the Startup Junkies podcast with uh, Randy Williamson, um, Business Services uh, at Arkansas Federal Credit Union. Randy, how's it going? Good. Thanks for having me. Thanks. What do you think about the place? This is a an, an awesome building and an yeah. even better location. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Good. we're we're glad yeah, to be here. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, thank you. We're excited. Uh, we opened in December up here. That this is a uh, number twenty one for Arkansas Federal okay. Credit Union in the state of Arkansas. Awesome. So glad to have you guys here. Yeah. Is this the um, as far as locations? Uh, is this the first in Northwest Arkansas or? Uh, this is the second because we have okay. one in Rogers. Okay. Uh, you know, we do uh, have dreams and visions to expand mm-hmm. even further, you know, but I'll leave that to the executive team to tell you where that's going. I don't, I don't <laughs> you want to heard it the, here first. Uh. I, don't, I don't want to give the competition any leg up on where we're going. But uh, yeah, this is 21. We have 21 branches awesome. in Arkansas. Uh, we're the largest credit union in Arkansas. Uh, been around. We're about to celebrate 68 years. Wow. 68 wow, years. That's amazing history. Yeah. And Credit Union was started with two airmen on the Air Force Base, Jeff. Was it really? Yeah. Down in Little Rock Air Force Base? Uh-huh. 500 no bucks. I didn't know what to do with their, their 500 bucks uh-huh. or whatever it was. It was a very small amount. And so uh-huh. they formed a credit union. No kidding. Yeah. I had no yeah. idea. That's great history. Yeah. That's, so, and we're, we're pushing 2.4 billion now. Uh-huh. So we're, wow. we're getting pretty strong and, uh, we're trying to expand our footprint in the business services. Mm-hmm. You know, we've, we've always been a great consumer uh-huh. entity. Um, our business services team is about eight years old now. Gotcha. I, uh-huh. I'm betting a, a lot of the folks in our audience have a to- hard time understanding the difference between a credit union and a bank. Sure. Can you give us a little bit of that contrast? Yeah, sure. Uh, w- one of the, the big differences is banks are owned by their stockholders, mm-hmm. you know, and they're accountable to their stockholders by way of dividends. Uh, credit unions are owned by members. So the member, each member is an owner of our credit union by way of their account. So, um, one of the, the big difference between a credit union and a bank is we're not taxed. We don't, we're exempt from federal and state tax. And so that allows us to pass that savings back on into fees and interest rates back to our products. Um, but yeah, most, most people probably have this stigma, Jeff, that, uh, credit unions are a little consumer. You know, I can get my car loan there. I can get my, my, uh, home equity loan there, but no, we're, we are a full service bank type entity, right. if you would. We have everything uh, that any bank across the street would have. So mm-hmm. uh, we are getting the word out. Hey, we are big boys now and uh, looking for so uh, opportunity. A- anybody, any business in Arkansas can, yep. can do business yep. with yep. Arkansas Federal. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. exciting. So uh, in kind of looking at it from a full full service lens, um, let's talk about the SBA resources too. Mm-hmm. I know that it's something that, uh, that not every bank offers, but it's something that's incredibly valuable to small business. Yeah. Owners. You know, um, with the PPP money that happened, you know, during pandemic, it, uh, that, that was, I used to work for the SBA. Mm-hmm. So I kind of was in mm-hmm. there during the pandemic. Um, we put all the PPP responsibility onto banks mm-hmm. to process those loans. But what happened is a lot of FIs, financial institutions, their eyes got wide open and say, wait a minute, there's opportunity in government backed loans. And mm-hmm. so um, I had met the credit union guys at um, at one point and they said, hey, we, we'd love to get in the SBA lending space. Mm-hmm. And so that's where I came on board to help mm-hmm. them get in the SBA lending mm-hmm. space. It's a, it's a great it's a great tool to have in your tool belt as, as a commercial bank. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not the catch all. You know, some people think, oh, well, that's a subprime. It's 100 mm-hmm. percent financing. And it's it's not, mm-hmm. you know, but the requirements uh, and the um, uh, terms can be a little more favorable on an SBA loan, mm-hmm. especially for startups. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of a lot of big commercial banks will write in their guidelines that they don't do startup loans. Mm-hmm. You know, unless it comes with a government guarantee mm-hmm. of some sort. So, um, yeah. So I came on board to help us launch the SBA department. Uh, we did that last year, and I was just sharing with Jeff. Uh, we finished in the top twenties. 
mm. you know, in the state of Arkansas mm. last year is our first year. Oh, so we're, we're enjoying it. You know, sometimes the, the small businesses and startups, they've kind of been educated to, to believe that banks aren't really an option for lending until you have three years of operating mm -hmm. history. What, what kind of advice would you give them to where they become bankable? Sure. What, what sort of process should they think about? It, traditional lending is three years of track history. Right. You know, so uh, SBA considers you a new business or a startup if you're less than two years in operation. Um, so uh, what I what I have to help people uh, learn and educate them when it comes to going to an SBA or a startup loan, it really comes down, Jeff, to the plan, mm -hmm. your business mm -hmm. plan. You know, what's the plan? Because you, you, mm -hmm. you meet people all the time. They got a great product, an invention, a service, a talent, a skill or ability. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to take it to market. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we say, well, it's because you're a brand new business, we're going to need to look at an SBA sure. opportunity. And then it kind of really delves into the business plan. Sure. What's your plan? Sure. You know, mm -hmm. sure. And that's where a lot of people need a lot of education on is, is business planning because you know it may be a cocktail napkin in the kitchen with their spouse and like that's that's a that's an idea mm -hmm. that's not a plan <laughs> you know so i just try to help them you know partner with people right. and put their plans together you know we don't we don't want to try to write a business plan by ourselves sure you know it's it's and and a lot of times you'll see it's the spouse or your family mm -hmm. sitting around the table and everybody's etching out how we're going to make millions of dollars <laughs> well you need outside input for sure. You know, you need people that are really just tell you things that you might not want to hear, tell you things that you might not didn't know mm -hmm. or think about. So really, I, I'll, I'll work with them on that planning side. That's I mean, that's such a it, it's it's really a good context. When you think about it as a small business owner or startup founder, there's this acronym called bail. Yeah. Right. The banking relationship. Yep. The accounting relationship, yep. insurance and then yep. the lawyer. And, yep. and and we we talk to founders about that a lot. Get that stuff figured out. Because yeah. even if you're not credit worthy, you can't take a loan, you gotta bootstrap, you gotta use your own resources. Right. You you need to have a collegial, good working relationship with that banker. Yep. So that if stuff comes up and and as you get down the road and it's the middle of the night and all of a sudden you've got AR that's been extended, you can call that banker up and say, Hey, yep. I need an extension yep. or an expansion of my right. line of credit. Yep. So it's a super important relationship. Yeah, and it's about the relationship. Sure. It really is, you know, and, and when when a lot of people will come with a plan, my my next question will be, who helped you do this plan? Sure. Who, who did this plan? <laughs> yeah. yep. You know, and then you, you, you it, some of them you can see straight up on the surface. Okay, you didn't get help with this plan, you know, because it's missing all the components yeah. that yep. banks like to see yep. in that. Yep. You know, it's about who you are and what you're doing, but the how we're going to do it, which is the financial, For sure. the pro formas are real important. No doubt. Um, one, one of the things that I see a lot is people have a great big dreams and visions about all the money they're going to make in their business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we have to say, okay, let's, you, you realize we have industry data, you know, you're going to start a trucking business. Well, I have data on the trucking industry. Uh, I had a young man a year or so ago come to me. who's going to make a million dollars with one dump truck. Pretty I said, sweet deal. I, I was like, <laughs> what kind of dump truck are you buying? <laughs> you know? And so we had to bring him down and say, no, industry is about 250, 300 with one truck. Yeah. You yeah. know? So, and, and we asked people, what's your marketing plan? Word of mouth. Oh, that's great. How many friends do you have on Facebook? Uh, five. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can put you in touch with some marketing professionals to help you develop a marketing plan. So, you know, we, we uh, encourage people to use folks like Arkansas Small Business Technology yep. Development Center. Uh, I have a great relationship with those folks. You've got Mary Beth up here Absolutely. in Northwest Arkansas yeah. and uh, Laura Fine and Brandon Horvath down in Central Arkansas. Uh, we do a lot of things together and we have a good time. Um, but you're very right. You, you've got to get accounting professionals to speak into. Sure. It. You've got to get legal counsel. Mm -hmm. And um, that's just part of the front end brunt of starting a business. You know, you don't you don't want to walk into the bank with something scratched on a piece no, of paper no and say, I need a million dollars to do this thing. No doubt about you it. Know? Yeah, and, we, and we a lot of times we'll intercept the, the founders at an even earlier state and mm -hmm. say, you, you've got to go through and validate that there's mm -hmm. even a need. Yeah. Use this lean yeah. canvas, lean startup approach that yeah. forces you to kind of be a consultant to your own idea. Right. And then right. go out and don't just talk to friends and family. Right. Go out and ask good, open-ended questions through right. customer discovery of people that are going to be candid. Yep. And tell you. Right. 
either this is a problem or it isn't a problem, right. but you're going to get that kind of direct feedback. Right. Mm -hmm. And we encourage people, go check out your competition. For sure. You know, shop yeah. your competition and do some shadow shopping and that mm -hmm. kind of thing uh, to see what's what's going to set you different. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to start an ice cream truck. Well, there's 50 other ice cream trucks here. Right. Why is your ice cream going to be better than theirs? <laughs> right, right. You know? So mm -hmm. let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's difficult, too. A lot of times they think, well, we're going to offer it at a lower price. And that's typically a go out of business strategy. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, start, startups and small business don't have the scale to win on price typically. Right. And so they've got to figure out how to do something that's higher value, better customer service, whatever right. it may be. Right. That's a differentiator. Right. Yeah. You're really right exactly. about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, to the point about the customer discovery, you mentioned, you know, everybody thinks they're going to be a millionaire tomorrow with whatever their idea is. They also get super married. That's my to plan. The, at the minute, at the minute. Yeah, that's the stage yeah. I'm in. Yeah. I'm learning a lot. The reality is not by example. You, you know, I you're, think he's in the seed fund stage, yeah. right? Yeah. I, that's yeah. what I like the, to call it. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the thought, the thought is lifestyles yeah. and the rich and famous. Yeah. Yeah. The episode should be called long hours and low wages for a long time. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> or yeah. long hours and no wages for a long time. Uh, so it's hard. So they get married to that idea too they're going to be millionaires but they're also going to be millionaires with exactly how they dreamt it up with no feedback input right. whatsoever right. this is how i want to do it mm -hmm. you know somebody says well i, don't, I kind of want to like it this way or that way no this is what it is yeah um yeah. so uh that forcing them to go out and test their assumptions and mm -hmm. talk to people kind of prevents yeah, us from having to do the dirty work of saying, well, that is moronic. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't want to, I'm not referring that to anyone that I know. Yeah. And we, you know, the, as, as a matter of form though, we typically won't do that. Mm -hmm. We won't say, yeah. and, and believe me, we see 2000 entrepreneurs <laughs> a year. We see a lot of things that right. are ill-conceived. Yeah. I'll, I'll put it that yeah. way. But <laughs> yeah. we won't tell them, you know, geez, that's the dumbest idea I ever yeah. heard. Yeah. We'll mm -hmm. say, you know what? Here's the template, the Celine Canvas is customer discovery. Go do that for two weeks a month. Talk to a hundred people that are not friends and family. Right. See what you learn. Mm -hmm. And some of them can get that mindset of being a consultant to their own idea and it's like a revelation. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are just hell bent on their own ideas, they either don't come back. Right. Which is fine. Mm -hmm. right. They sort of self-select out mm -hmm. because right. that reality was maybe something they couldn't stand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or or they're not teachable. It, you know, exactly. they're not teachable, Jeff. Yeah. You know, yeah. when when you get folks like you guys and us, we've been around this. We've seen just sure. about every industry there is out there. Mm -hmm. You know, we can say, well, you know, I've seen it really work this way. You know, why don't you go? No, this is how I'm going to do it. Yeah. And they've drawn a line in the sand. This is my plan. This is how I'm going to do it. And it's it's unfortunate. I tell you, one of the one of the biggest. Um, uh, strikes against a startup new business for me is when I look at the pro formas and I see the number one expense line is owner compensation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and I was just like, so you're basically telling me you're going to pay yourself before you even pay me, your lender, <laughs> or your employees, or your vendors. And that's, that's just, uh, so we have to tell people, you get paid on the bottom. Yeah. All right. Now, mm. now certainly you can draw a salary and For you're sure. providing service in the company, but you're you're getting rich is at the bottom yeah. after yeah. everyone else gets paid. She was saying it's at least a few years before I get rich. And so Yeah, <laughs> you're way at the bottom yeah. person, yeah, like yeah. the bottom bottom right now. Yeah. I mean, we can't even see you right now. Because I've written in my Excel spreadsheet, I've got a little two hundred thousand dollar number that I was gonna pull out the back end. For yourself? Thinking, yeah, no, you start, with 20. 20. <laughs> start with twenty. Two, yeah, twenty. Start with twenty. Start with twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have that, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, but you know, the, the thing too, that um, I try to help people, a business plan is fluid. Sure. You know, just because you mm -hmm. present a business plan doesn't mean it can be changed. It can be modified. Mm -hmm. I encourage people to go back at the end of six months and see how did we do? Are we For hitting? Sure. Are we hitting our metrics? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Go back the next year. Mm -hmm. Are we hitting it? Do I need to adjust my forecast for the following year? Right. So right. it's 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 a living, breathing document that can um, mm -hmm. uh, be adapted. We we encourage people when they do get to the point where they've they've done some good customer discovery, they're developing a financial model. Do three scenarios, a little bit of sensitivity analysis. Yep. Best case, yep. revenues are exceed expectations, expenses are low. Worst case, which sometimes can be the likely case, yep. your expenses are higher than you expected, your revenues are slow to develop. And then somewhere in between there is a realistic case. Mm -hmm. But you're never going to be surprised if you do that kind of an assessment through the process. Right. Right. You're getting, there's going to be a fit there mm -hmm. somewhere. Now, famous guy, Guy Kawasaki, who was the chief evangelist for Apple, said, take your worst case forecast and multiply it times 
10%, and that's probably where you're going to sell. <laughs> yeah, good, good on it. You know, I, You'll uh, never be disappointed if you, if you no, go down that that's path, right, right? That's right. Yeah, every, every year is a growth year. Right. Um, one of the things that I do, and it's not a policy or anything, but I stress test at 50%. Do you? I yeah. do. Yeah. I just do a stress test. To see if it's going to make that's sense. Right. Yeah. That's right. I, I'll do a stress test, see if it's going to cash flow at 50%. Um, because unfortunately, one of the things that pandemic did, and it, it will cause the, the, the SBA to look through a lens, is there's a what if yeah what yeah. if there's another pandemic mm-hmm. and your sure. business is shut down for mm-hmm. six months nobody can come in the restaurant or you can't deliver mm-hmm. anything or you can't sell anything yeah. so we have to run you through this what if filter yeah. and that's where the working capital piece comes in for sure mm-hmm. how are we going to do this how are we going to float this business in the mm-hmm. event of another pandemic mm-hmm. or what if what if you don't have sales what, what kind of luck do you have as you're as you're advising clients and getting them to think about reserve yeah. maintaining a reserve yeah you know, even it, it beyond what you might have with your line of credit just having some that gets set aside the retained earnings yeah exactly. you want to see some retained earnings in the plan you know um we don't want to see all of the net income go to the owner like harrison's going to do in his company <laughs> you know and there's no retained earnings and that, mm-hmm. we'll teach you about retained earnings Thank you. I yeah we'll, we'll help you with that yeah it's important um i i have a couple of uh great small businesses that we did startups for we started their companies and they immediately opened up a business savings account Immediately, right out of the yeah, gate, makes sense. you know, they opened up their business tax account, yep. you know, and, and so what we see and, and boy, the SBA will say this, the FDIC sees this a lot. We have, we see too much commingling yeah. of personal and oh, business yeah. money, yep. you know, and there has to be separation. So can't be a personal piggy bank. No. Mm-hmm. And if, and, yeah. if, and if the IRS frowns upon that, that's right. <laughs> if, if we start seeing, um, grocery stores and department stores and your business checking account, yeah. it's going to bring up red flags, mm-hmm. you know, as a lender, because just because you close on your loan today doesn't mean you're bank or your lender is going to keep an eye on we're going to keep an eye on you mm-hmm. you know we're going to watch things but yeah the reserves uh and the savings is huge yeah so i i love it when they come to me and say look i'm already planning to do this i don't just need one operating account i need yeah. three accounts yeah. and this is the purpose of this account mm-hmm. i'm going to move them on you know because they got big tax bills coming at them for sure you know and so yeah it's very right. important for them to be thinking about that not just consuming all of your income yeah uh, that's the, that's the other thing that's kind of it's just such good advice that's the shock is if, if you if you are set up as an LLC and there's this pass through to avoid double taxation, which is a smart idea, right? All that if you are making money, all that fa- falls on the owner, right? And if you're not paying your estimated taxes, right? You get to the end of the year and it's like, oh my god, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I can't buy that boat. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's right. it's really it's really smart. And again, that gets back to having a shrewd banker in your corner, having right. that kind of support, right. so that you don't make those kind of uh, mm-hmm. those kind of mistakes. And I would imagine that occasionally you'll see restaurants or other small businesses where they get behind, they don't do worth holdings on payroll mm-hmm. or they're not doing sales tax the way they should. Yeah. And all of a sudden that's a close the doors and you're out of business right. because mm-hmm. the right. state right. And, and others will come for you right. in that mm-hmm. case. It, and it, it is so important for business owners to, to be forward talking to their bankers, their lenders, you know, before the crisis hits, mm-hmm. because when the emergency hits it, for us, it was like, okay, that's a lack of planning, mm-hmm. you know? And so a lot of times we can't help you with emergency, right? you know? Right. Um, um, we, we get it. W- one thing that I, I see more than I like to see is new businesses committing themselves before they've talked to a bank or lender, mm-hmm. sign a lease, sign a contract mm-hmm. to purchase yeah. something, <laughs> sign yeah. an order to build something. Okay, yeah. I need a hundred thousand dollars tomorrow because I got this <laughs> order. Well, why didn't you call me last month? Right. And we could have worked this out. Right, right. You know, so now we don't mm-hmm. have time. And now that you, mm-hmm. as a business owner, that's your reputation. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it's. I think a lot of people are afraid to talk to their banks. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. there's there's this fear and trepidation. They're, oh man, I got to go talk to the bank. And these are these are dark suit tie wear people and we're just like no we're we're just normal come yeah. talk to yeah. us yeah. you know because uh, i was sharing with jeff earlier you know with us uh and with me i've worked for some big gorilla banks sure i'm talking some wells fargo type banks and it, a, a lot of what we did was transactional lending mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just close the transaction move on to the next mm-hmm. one it's transactional lending mm-hmm. and so my heart changed many years ago but i'm more relational Mm-hmm. You know, and that's how we are here at Arkansas Federal. Mm-hmm. That's it's, consistent it's, with the culture of yes, this place, that's right? right. You, you, mm-hmm. you kind of value that. That's it right. Makes a big difference. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're we're about the person and the the individual mm-hmm. first. And mm-hmm. I sit in our loan committee meetings, and the very first topic we talk about is who are these people? 
Mm-hmm. Where are they from? What's their background? What's their experience? Mm-hmm. You know, so we kind of dig into that first. Before Understanding we get into, their character. Yeah, right? yeah, and because and how they're going to be. We don't just want to make a loan for you and just you know forget about you. Right. And, you know, we we want to be on this journey with you. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to help your children as they start mm-hmm. co- growing and needing car loans and mortgages and that mm-hmm. kind of thing. So we want to help you buy the next location or the expand. Or you know, we got we have companies that are wanting to franchise, and we have to say, well, you need about five years under your belt before you do that. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, really? No, I. I got one store I want a franchise. <laughs> not ready for that yet. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of it's it's almost like clinical counseling that we have sure. to yeah. do. You know, <laughs> it really you, is. You know, yeah. bankers, bartenders, and what we do, we're yeah. we're like <laughs> yeah. we're, we're like armchair psychologists. That's right. We, <laughs> <laughs> we really are. Like we that. are. We really are. Um, in in building and maintaining those relationships and kind of encouraging people to come, you know, visit with their their bankers. Uh, speak to the importance of having place associated with that, like having a, a place, a location like physical this, branch, physical yes, like yes. Just branch, having a place, yeah, that's, the brick and mortar that's yeah. like right here mm-hmm. um, in the heart of a, a you know a growing region, to yeah. where folks can come into a welcoming building and it, it have is that it's it it really it it solidifies a relationship. We have uh, Arkansas gets a really high influx of out of state lenders. Mm-hmm. You know, especially in SBA world, mm-hmm. uh, we've got a lot of out of state lenders, you know, doing deals and they have no brick and mortar here. So the brick and mortar is very important because there's a stigma. I can walk into my bank. There's a vault somewhere in there that has my money. <laughs> and we're like, that's nah, not here. But, <laughs> but you know, there's just that I, I, I need to touch, touch it. I need to meet somebody there. So it means a lot, especially for business owners. They, they like the relationship you know, between their lender sure. and their business, because they, like you said, they could pick up the phone. I have a lot of people pick up the phone. I've got this, I need to do this. We're like, okay, we'll take care of it. Get it done tomorrow, you know, kind mm-hmm. of thing. So the relationship piece mm-hmm. is huge. Mm-hmm. For the emerging generations though, though, I mean, it'd be interesting your perspective on this. There's a level of comfort they have with digital transactions and with mobile mm-hmm. banking Yeah, that, that some of the groups that are my age and older, boomers may not have the, the, the same degree of comfort with. How is Arkansas Federal Credit Union accommodating those emerging customers that are they grew up in a digital? They're digital natives. Yeah. So uh, even in our business services department, we try to have all the bells and whistles and the tools too. So we we have all the online banking and all the you know the uh, the things that a business needs sure. you know for a business. So we can we can accommodate you. Can you can do all that. We can so accommodate you. They really That's don't. Right. They don't yeah. want to. They That's don't right. want to talk to anybody. They don't want to look up from their phone. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you if, can take those customers if too. They want, if they want direct deposits, they want to scan checks and it mm-hmm. goes in the bank yeah. and when they never have to come, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, unless they get cash, which I don't know that anybody even takes cash anymore. <laughs> unless you're a district attorney, nobody does. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Pay our bills in cash. <laughs> no, don't do that. I'll tell all my business people, don't do that. Don't, please don't do that. You know, but yeah, so there, there is that component that you need the online right. bank services and that's what we provide right. as well mm-hmm. uh, because we have some that we we don't see them we don't see the the, the member for months or mm-hmm. years right you know but we know they're out there because mm-hmm. you sure. see their accounts sure. but yeah mm-hmm. yeah so the digital presence is is very important for us too mm-hmm. Harrison what's on your mind as an emerging future millionaire as an emerging future millionaire with an imaginary terrible business <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess something I want to ask you more about rather than just uh, specifically Arkansas Federal Credit Union is kind of how you got to the position where, where you're at today and what a little you, better you're your kind of, uh, yeah. sure. genesis. So uh, when I got out of school, uh, my wife and I were um, are from Florida, but we didn't know each other when I got out of school. She's a little bit younger than me. And so I thought I was going to be in a retail. I thought I was going to uh, go down a retail path. And uh, I got the, the the fortunate time in my life to work for Sam Walton uh, at Walmart. And uh, that was the time where uh, Walmart was headed to the East Coast. Right. We we're opening stores as fast mm-hmm. as we could. Uh, and I actually hired my wife uh, working at Walmart. So um, I had to talk her into resigning because Sam had a no fraternization policy. <laughs> and so I made a little bit more money than she did. So uh, she's like, sure, if I can still date you, I'll quit. And so, so here we are today in Northwest Arkansas at the home of Walmart. Wow. Oh, that's cool. You know, 40 years. Full and, circle. Yeah, full circle. And uh, our daughter, uh, 
uh, lives here in Bentonville and works for Walmart and has a great Very career cool. uh, with Walmart as well. And she teases people at the corporate office. I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for Sam Walton. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what? You know, so so what happened, Harrison, uh, in the retail world, and I love all my retail people out there. Um, that's a that's a very busy world. Mm -hmm. And I would be working in the stores on holidays, Memorial Day, mm -hmm. July 4th. And I was like, well, all these people are off. Why are you yeah. off? And I would ask people, so I just said, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm in banking. I'm in real estate. <laughs> I went home and told my wife, I said, I'm going into banking because I could be off I've today. Heard of these bankers hours. <laughs> yeah, these <laughs> bankers hours. You play golf. You go to the country club. Yeah, they're not <laughs> open on Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, sure. That's right. <laughs> Don't call us on Thanksgiving. You know? And so I shifted my career into banking and financing and just worked my way up. I actually started in the industry in collections. So if you ever go delinquent on me, Harrison, I can not, uh, I can chase you down. I will find you. He's got a whole army of knuckle draggers. He was telling me. Before. Did you enjoy that responsibility? Or I, was it a difficult I job? Did, you know, I, I in the beginning I did because I was working hard on my career, but then my heart strings started oh, getting yeah. pulled real heavy. That's you know, I can imagine, and it's yeah. just That's it's very bargain. difficult. So I I transitioned over to the lending side. Yeah. Um, and that's when I, you know, got the opportunity to work for some very large banks. But I, I was telling Jeff, uh, you know, like, for, for example, Arkansas Federal Credit Union, I've only been employed here for two years, but I've been a member here for 10. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. when I worked for mm -hmm. big, big giant banks, mm -hmm. I was a member of my credit union because just the atmosphere is different. The relationship's mm -hmm. better. Yeah. Uh, one time uh, when I was working for a very large bank, uh, my my boss was in town. He knew I was buying a house and he said, are you doing that deal with us? <laughs> I said, no, sir. I'm doing it with my credit union. <laughs> he said, why? I said, because I got this, this, this and this and this. He said, dang, I'd do that deal too. I said, that's why I'm doing business with my credit union. Yeah. So it's, it's been great. So how, how I met the um, uh, Arkansas Federal, I was working for the SBA at the time and the uh, pandemic had, you know, was coming down and mm -hmm. I, I didn't even know if I was going to stay in Arkansas. I felt like we might've go back to the East coast. And I met the executive team at Arkansas Federal and they said, Hey, we'd like to, you know, get into SBA lending. So that's why I'm here. Great story. Thanks. And as far as advice, not to go back to um, the nuts and bolts of it all, I'm curious for our listeners um, who are in a position, um, they are working on their business plan. You mentioned kind of some some gaps that you don't like to see and some things you do like to see, like the reserves and such. Right. Um, when looking at a business plan and giving advice to a listener that's in the process of that, what are some do's and don'ts associated with that that you would say absolutely i want to see this need to see this and yeah that, absolutely don't want to see this yeah 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 the do's are you know we we really need to know your background and your strengths mm -hmm. and if you don't have the particular strength in that industry we want to see that you've got somebody teed up to hire mm -hmm. to help you with that mm -hmm. okay so I, I may have this great product but i don't know how to get it out there and make mm -hmm. it so i need to hire that um i'm just, i'm we're building a big uh, pub and brewery in Little Rock and um, the owners were not brewmasters, okay? Degreed licensed brewmasters, but in their plan, here's our guy, mm -hmm. here's his experience, mm -hmm. and here's when he starts, and you know, they had it mapped out. So we wanna see really hard who who the players are, mm -hmm. you know? Um, um, and, the, and then the marketing piece of it, what's gonna set you, uh, What's going to make you different? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how are you going to mm -hmm. beat your competitor? And it's price is not always the answer. I sell them. You know, mm -hmm. I sell them the answer. You're right. In unless you're Walmart. Uh, right, right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Everyday low pricing works for them. Oh, my gosh. When I worked for Sam, we would not be undersold. It was like heaven and hell were splitting wide open if our comp <laughs> competitors sold anything below we did. So, uh, uh, but yeah. Um, so really the, the narrative, the part I tell people mm -hmm. the business plan should really be who, about who you are, what we're doing and how we're going to yeah. do it. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so the how piece is really, um, mm -hmm. where I want to see some outside counsel into that, mm -hmm. the marketing plan, mm -hmm. you know, the scope of the industry, your competitors, mm -hmm. because companies like ASB, TDC or score, yeah. you know, um, I've been involved with score in central Arkansas as well. They can help you kind of say, well, here's the industry, mm -hmm. right. you know, and, and when they don't, they don't get that counsel. You can, you can tell straight away in the plan, nobody helped you with this, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. you know, so we really want to see that, you know, another, another kind of pitch for, 
the Arkansas Small Business Technology Development Center is they've got all these databases mm-hmm. that are available mm-hmm. to them. So if you've got something that's location dependent, a restaurant or a small right. retail location, right. they can do that traffic right. study for you right. mm-hmm. to figure out this is kind of why you want to locate in an area or not. Right. Right. And, and they know great. food cost. Exactly. They have food cost data. Great, great you know, resource. we, we had a, we had a restaurant that, uh, we had to help. Uh, your food cost is way off. It's, it's way too low. Mm-hmm. And, and here's why. Let me let you speak to the guys at ASPDDC, mm-hmm. uh, Elemental. We call them the Alphabet Soup Company. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a great organization with the world's worst acronym. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's something that yeah. somebody who grew up in the Cold War thought, let's come up with an acronym, acronym that is how many, how many letters can we get <laughs> right. in our name? So, uh, my, my my team will say, "Hey, you working with Alphabet Soup Company on that deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, we're working with it. But I love them. It's a great organization. Yeah, score and those are two great nonprofits that will yep. help you do these plans for free. Exactly. They won't charge you a fee. Now mm-hmm. uh, there are other resources out there that you can pay professionals sure. to help you put a plan together, mm-hmm. um, and they're going to do it just as well. You know, that can, can be a bankable plan. Well, and they're and they're they're actually. I mean, the, with the rise of AI, there are some pretty good platforms out there that will yeah. help assemble. A plan. Yep. But you you can't assume that oh, it's gone through the AI. It's gone through whatever template that it's done. Right. That's just you've got to be in really critical editor mode and still mm-hmm. get the feedback from the people that right. know from that's the experts. Right. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we try not to duplicate services and what we offer clients as well. We're not going to sit down and go put together a forty page right. business plan <clears throat> with the client. We'll do the link canvas and kind of get them to test those assumptions. But the way I kind of look at the resources available uh, in our region from an entrepreneurial support perspective is, you know, we're all kind of providing a resource in this continuum of resources. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, if they're in a position to get some market research and a full scale business plan, I'm sending you ASBTDC all day long. Yeah, 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 me too. Me too. You know, and and the the financial piece is is hard for a lot of business owners, young Mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. They, you know, they just, they don't, understand okay i got payroll i got payroll taxes i got mm-hmm. insurance i got i got this i got loan payments i got interest payments i got principal payments you know um i i got a business plan the other day and it, it was done without outside help and had like three expense items on it i was like what kind of business are you going to run well we're just going to group everything together <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do what? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> it's like no, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me make a warm hand off to somebody that can help you do that. Three yeah. expense yeah. items is not a plan. Is it kind of like store donuts, coffee. Was that kind of <laughs> well, how that? In, that in your case, it would be store donuts, me. Store donuts, me, right, Harrison? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. yeah so yeah, you would yeah. be right there in well, the Well, there's, there's a box of donuts over there, and that's my starting kind of source of product. <laughs> sure, here, <but>. sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's a consumer. Is there <laughs> any other? piece of information that you think would be important that our audience knows about that you've not already talked about so far? Yeah, you know, don't don't get overly discouraged if you get turned away by the first bank, the second mm-hmm. bank, yeah. you know, first lender, you know, mm-hmm. and it's because you are the the sad reality is um we might only close 15% for sure. Of startup, mm-hmm. you know, requests. Yeah. You know, that's on, that's a high side. Mm-hmm. Most FIs will be in the 10%, yeah. you mm-hmm. know. So that's one out of every 10 plan is mm-hmm. going to get funded, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, with true. that particular bank. Mm-hmm. So you've got to knock on doors. And w- one one thing is, you know, not not every bank, not every FI and every credit union likes an appetite for certain industries. Sure. So you've got to find that lender that has an appetite for your mm-hmm. industry uh, and those that are aggressive with it. So, mm-hmm. you know, I I, I had a meeting with uh, Adrian Brown, the director of SBA, uh, not too long ago, and she said, "Are you going after certain markets, certain segments?" I said, "Well, right now we're fishing with a net. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. we're yep. just fishing with a mm-hmm. net, and we're catching. But a lot of a lot of lenders fish with a hook, right? Mm-hmm. You know, they know what they want, and they're going after that mm-hmm. industry. So, In, another thing, and I'd be interested in your thoughts on this is sometimes th- th- there may be potential. There there may be something good about it." the the uh, uh the client might be credit challenged or might not be at a point where they're yet bankable right but there are cdfis that are yeah. out there micro like lenders Forge, like Forge, yep. arkansas capital yeah. there are micro lenders yep. like what we yep. do with the kiva yep. uh, loan yep. program yep. and and those are those are sometimes a great place to start yep. so if you get no just because yep. you're not going to fit even even uh, a character driven kind of mm-hmm. conventional model mm-hmm. Look at those CDFIs, yes. those sort of nonprofit, yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. smaller players. They can help get you started. Right. And if you go through that process well and you pay it back, 
you then become credit worthy and you can right. go to the bank. That's right. And you're ready yeah. to go. And, and I refer Forge, you know, yeah. a few folks yeah. over to Forge and Kiva. Uh, I've done some um, uh, 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 mentoring with the Venture Center uh -huh. uh, in Little Rock. And it's about what if I can't get a bank loan? So we talk about crowdfunding, you know, crowdsourcing and peer to peer funding yep. and micro lenders like yep. that. So, you know, one, one thing for me, because I've been doing this ever since the invention of fax machines, you know, if anybody doesn't know what a fax machine is or carbon paper, you know, our loan documents were printed on carbon paper. Um, I try and, and well, I don't try. I do. When I get a request, Jeff, I look at it with no blinders on. Sure. You know, I don't try to just squeeze you into a specific mm -hmm. product because my goal is to get you that capital as fast as I can down the path of least resistance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, That's a good so attitude. it could it could be a personal loan. It could be a home equity loan. It could be an unsecured loan. It could be a Kiva referral right. or a Forge mm -hmm. referral or it could be a full blown commercial loan or it could be sure. an SBA, mm -hmm. you know, gar guaranteed loan. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's that's what I, I enjoy the most of what are we looking for? How fast do we need it? How can I get you down yeah. this path? Hmm. Makes sense. And I think entrepreneurs too, you mentioned, you know, kind of only 10% of those might actually get uh, closed. The entrepreneurs need to be comfortable with hearing no a yeah. lot. <laughs> yeah, a yeah. lot. And be prepared for that. <laughs> yeah, they that do. Just comes with it. You know, and, and I tell, sometimes I'll tell people, this is a great plan. You're great people, but you just need to put this on the shelf. You know, it's just, it's not time. It's mm -hmm. just not time. Keep your day job. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that makes us real nervous when they come to this plan and I'm going to quit my day job, I'm quitting my day job. And I'm like, whoa, 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 everybody settle down. Let's don't quit day jobs just yet. You know, don't turn in your notice. You know, I, I did a transaction and uh, that bless their hearts. They quit their day job the day after we closed. I said, you didn't tell me you were going to do that. You know, so now you have to have to watch you. You know, I've got to keep an eye on you now. And so um, what I like to see a lot, Caleb, is for people to keep their outside income as we start this thing. Sure. You know, let's let's take Treat this it as a side hustle in a way. Absolutely. Until you get to the point that the cash flow supports it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that can come back into the working capital piece that mm -hmm. we can factor in. You have yeah. outside income. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, you have outside resources. OK, if we do have a, a what if you've got the ability to do this. Mm -hmm. So. I, I try to get everybody, keep your day job. Let's keep this. Let's start this on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Let's work it, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, as an entrepreneur, you're going to work a lot, yeah. Yeah. you know, day and night. You're going to be, this thing is going to put you to sleep. And it's going to wake you up every day. <laughs> but let's keep focused on, you know, Mm -hmm. earning a paycheck while we built this thing. Mm -hmm. And when it comes time to quit your day job, I feel like most people know it, it gets to the point where it's like, okay, I have yes. to at this point. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Because of the time, the, yeah, the time involved. Yeah. Once the business gets up and going, you know, um, what I like about um, what I do too is, is the family starting sure. family businesses. Sure. You know, when I see husbands and wives and, and adult children all coming on bar and, and the, the, the dad and the mom, we're keeping our day jobs, but our adult kids are going to run the business. Sure. Okay. That brings me great peace. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause I know we got outside income. Mm -hmm. We're still building a family business. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just opened up a big dog daycare in, uh, North Little Rock. Um, and it's a family business. Yeah. The, big opportunity that's a big market too mm -hmm. the yeah. dog doggy daycare my, my mom actually owns a doggy daycare this is not a plug but yeah. uh <laughs> my, she, it, it quickly straight yes. away over christmas one christmas we had five six dogs yeah and we had to lock them off in this room lock them yeah. off in this room walk yeah. them every single day yeah. it was a night it's a it's a difficult business to be yeah. in but it's a good one to be in this this daycare had 71 reservations the first day wow, wow. day one wow and we're like, okay, we're on the side. That makes me feel good as a lender. I'm like, okay, this is going to work. But yeah. Wow. Um, well, I guess we're probably at the point of the conversation where we land the plane. Um, and our land the plane question is, uh, if you had the opportunity to hop in your time machine, go back in time before you started your banking journey, bef maybe before you started your professional career, with all the accumulated knowledge that you have now, what advice might you give young Randy? Uh, buy real estate in Northwest Arkansas. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good buy one. real estate in Northwest <laughs> yeah, Arkansas. Exactly. Buy yeah. everything around uh, Bentonville Square. That you Sam have. never told me that when I met him a couple of times. Hey, come on and buy some land in Bentonville. I'm down here in the panhandle of Florida. And I'm like, but I got the beach down here. But yeah, you know, real, real estate, you know, we're not making any more dirt. Yeah, you know, true. so what's out there is out there. So it would it would be and, you know, invest for the long haul. 
Mm-hmm. Invest in your future mm-hmm. long term. Mm-hmm. You know, so many times everybody's living paycheck to paycheck mm-hmm. and, you know, just trying to get by. And so there's our generation, you know, didn't get a lot of investment counseling, you yeah. know, uh, stock mm-hmm. market counseling, mm-hmm. real the estate investment. Buy a house. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. about as yeah. much yeah. advice yeah. as I got. Get a job, have kids, and buy a house. Yeah. That's your life. Yeah. And yeah. so what I love now about my, my kids is there's forward thinking. They're like, oh, wait a minute. You know, I can get a 401k match now. Let me yeah. do that. That's mm-hmm. like, that's free money. Yeah. So they're really starting to, so, mm-hmm. you know, the investment strategies I would probably mm-hmm. rethink, mm-hmm. but definitely buy land. You know, <laughs> For sure. that's I, solid I, advice. I, I remember <laughs> when land in Destin, Florida was very cheap, oh, you know, very cheap. <laughs> I would like to have some of that right exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like so, that. but uh, yeah, that's kind of my turn back, <laughs> you know. Great stuff. Great, it's good. great advice. Well, thank you so, so much for coming on. Thanks, it's Harrison. been a pleasure. Yes, sir. And what's what's the best way for our audience to connect with you or with sure. Arkansas Federal Credit Union? Sure. They can uh, call any branch, you know, and ask for Randy Williamson or the SBA guy, and everybody will know who that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can ask for business services uh, if it's anything outside of myself. But, um, yeah, it's rwilliamson at afcu.org. Awesome. R. Williamson at AFCU.org. I don't give my cell phone out until I close your loan. So that's fair. That's, <laughs> just say it. Just say it. We need some long calls. I understand. <laughs> no, you guys have been great. You know, I, I appreciate everything you do and what Jeff does at the conductor down in Conway. Sure. Uh, and I look forward to our crawl event, you know, coming up this year. October that's a good time. 3rd. October, October 3rd. 3rd. Is that locked in? Is that locked in? Is that right? Locked in October. Uh, let's see. I October. think it's October 4th, but I think, I think we are, we've blocked October 3rd off the calendar so that All we can right. get prepared. Yeah, you I got set up. You got kegs to glow. That's, a, Dude, that's the stuff. liver preparation. 4th. Yeah. 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 October 4th. Which, October is the, 4th. which is the Friday before the Tennessee game. Awesome. October awesome. Uh, so the okay. SEC Nation will be here too. So maybe oh, we'll that's going to be a good time. Tim Tebow Absolutely. in the square or something. You guys do a great job. Thank well, you so thank much for coming out to this new office. And congratulations again on this space. Thanks, Jeff. We appreciate you. Very good. Thank you. Ecosystem builders, entrepreneurs, chambers of commerce, mayors. If you're interested in taking your economic future into your own hands, we've got a book that can help you. Creating Startup Junkies, Building Sustainable Venture Ecosystems in Unexpected Places is the guide. It's a little bit inspiration. It's a little bit toolkit. What it will allow you to do is take your economic future into your own hands and build a sustainable small business innovation and entrepreneurial ecosystem in your backyard. If you'd like to hear more, check out creatingstartupjunkies.com. The Startup Junkie podcast reaches over 100 countries and has had over 100,000 downloads. If you're interested in reaching some of the most motivated and engaged innovators and entrepreneurs on a worldwide basis, give us a shout.